Charles, I want to say it was November 8th, um, 7th or 8th. It was before the November 9th, Week 10 Panthers at Bears matchup on Thursday Night Football. That's when I first uh, got wind that the uh, winds of change could once again be blowing through Charlotte. That's when I first got wind that Frank Wright was in trouble. Um, but what I found interesting, and I know David Tepper is the story, and we'll get to everything you know about Tepper and that organization, because for my money, you wrote the definitive profile of David Tepper as an NFL owner when he fired Matt Rule last season. Mm-hmm. But what was interesting to me about uh, the rumblings that I was hearing out of Carolina was that it wasn't just that David Tepper was impatient and was dissatisfied with the lack of immediate results uh, from the Reich regime. Nobody really bought into Frank Reich. Like the staff was out on him. The organization seemed to be out on him. And, And I don't mean to like, you know, kick a man while he's down right now. Firing is never cool, you know. But it wasn't just about Tepper being impulsive and impatient. It's like I think very early on, the organization knew that they didn't have the right guy. That it was like, okay, he's not very dynamic in front of the team. He's not what we thought he was going to be. He may have been the person who interviewed the best and brought this great staff together and had the the reputation and a track record. But it doesn't feel like this is as simple as an owner who's in over his head uh, who can't make up his mind. They might have just really missed on Frank Reich for a variety of reasons. Were you getting the same vibes out of Carolina as I was? I think it's what it reminded me a little bit of is how things were going with Nathaniel Hackett after he took over the Broncos, right? Where you're a month in and you're like, like, what's what's going on here? Like, what is like, how is this? It's, yeah. it, it's just a talent void or is it, um, you know, is it the offense? I, I think what I heard pretty quickly, well, not quickly, I, I would say by mid-October, I think I was hearing mm-hmm. like, hey, there's concerns about the scheme, just sort of the play calling. Like it's, it did, it's yeah. just not like this dynamic element to it where, right. um, you know, it, it feels like an offense that maybe 10 years ago was, you know, the kind of thing that you would run, but, but where is the evolution in some of the play calling yeah. and, and, you know, the, just the scheme evolution. Right. And, uh, you know, to me, I think that's probably the first uh, big red flag because you're like, this is his scheme. Like he's not going to go back to scheme school and like learn this in the <laughs> middle of this. So if if that's a problem and it's not already tailored toward what Bryce Young can do on the field, and you have bad offensive line play, and there's a lack of skill position um, talent around him you're in a hole that you're not going to climb out of. It was just, and so it was like, all right, well, who's going to elevate this? Well, you hope it's, it's, it's going to have to be Bryce young, um, helping to elevate this team as he gets better over the course of his rookie season. Well, the problem was he wasn't getting better. He was regressing. And if he's regressing, oh, yeah. you went out, you, and, and we can talk about this later with Tepper and, and the Steve Wilkes decision, but you went yep. after right because you wanted to pair him with that's a, you know, people are like, well, and, and I, I think is uh, of all the decisions that Tepper made, and we'll, we can talk about this, is um, a lot of them have turned out right. He has pulled uh, the jet lever, and it's been the right decision. The problem is it's the front end mm-hmm. of those decisions. He's yes. the one who created the wrong, the wrong thing, and then he pulls on it, which is great. You get out of your mistakes, but you keep making the mistakes on the front end. Wilkes. I don't think I don't think he steered away from Wilkes just because he was like, oh, well, I just don't want that guy. He wanted a no. coach to pair with the quarterback who was never going to leave. Right. He's like, I want an offensive yeah. coach. Well, if Reich, if we're talking in mid-November where you're like, uh-oh, scheme problems, uh-oh, the, the quarterback's not progressing, um, and and it's because of the guy you hired and paired him with, it's 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 the wrong pairing. It feels like a yeah. mismatch pairing, which Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson quickly felt like a mismatch pairing. Yeah. Th- yeah. Then you're like, all right, well, where is this going to go? And is it going to get better? And instead it got worse. And not only did it get worse, Tepper's sitting there looking at all these other rookie quarterbacks 
and he's even looking at Will Levis. Um, yeah, you know, on Sunday, and he's going, he's first going, picking a second hey, man. round. <laughs> why? Yeah, why does he look better than my guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like he, even he looks. You know, Will Levis had yeah. moments like so like Levis didn't put up huge yardage or anything. Like he was efficient, ran. You yeah. know, it's kind of a game management situation. But there were a couple throws where you're like, whoa, oh yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. Like he's. Yeah. Whereas with Bryce, it just has not happened. Is is one thing if if CJ Stroud the second pick is is balling, right. but the, a second round pick outperforming your guy, to, you know that's why he was yelling expletives outside the locker room. No, I mean it's a um, there's a lot there. I mean with Reich, like I said, it, it, from what I understand, it wasn't just scheme, it wasn't just the offensive ineptitude, it was leadership or lack thereof. Leadership. Like yeah. he just wasn't a great leader in front of uh, and for the team to where players, coaches executives like there was just a lot of like eh, I don't, I don't, I don't where, know. We where's the juice on this one, you know where's the juice, where's the juice? Right? that's it but yeah. it, but it but uh, but the the eject lever you mentioned i want to i want to say this too because i was having a completely unrelated conversation with somebody a little while ago that applies to david tepper we were just talking about business and and personnel and they use this phrase that i'm gonna repeat now and i'm gonna adopt it because i love it and, and the moment they said it, it kind of had me thinking differently about David Tepper. Like, okay, maybe there's something to be said for this. The phrase was, or is, hire slow, fire fast. And you just spoke to that a second ago. And, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you know, if you know, and, and to me, the fact that Frank Reich lasted in fewer games than Urban Meyer and Bobby Petrino, it Crazy. says that this was not a knee jerk reaction. That this was actually a long time coming. Not just in the last week when it started to get the noise started to get louder. Not just since I started hearing about it in early November. You and you know concerns in mid October, as you mentioned. It's like no, this has a long, been a long time coming. Where something's been missing here. And I guess I know nobody wants to hear this right now, but I guess there is something to be said and credit to be given to David Tepper. To just recognize and hey, this isn't working. We got to make a change, even if he even if he keeps doing the same thing over and over again. So the front end might be the issue. The higher slow part of that, where it's like, well, what are you doing during that that slow hiring process? Well, you're not recognizing what's faulty with Matt Rule or or or, or Frank Reich. But there is something to be said for not for, for changing course when you see that something just is not working and not trying to be stubborn about. It figuring out how to make it work. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. And I, and I actually think there's, I think there's some institutional memory here too, because I, I do think even early on with Matt rule, he was kind of like, uh, I don't know. Cause the, and you know what it was, it was because of they Matt rule and Marty Herney sold him on signing Teddy Bridgewater. Right. But to that deal, mm-hmm, to the, mm-hmm, to the contract. Mm-hmm. And then when he saw what Teddy Bridgewater was on the field, he was like, wait a minute. That guy's not a Super Bowl, like drag you to a Super Bowl quarterback. That's what mm-hmm. I want. And you sold me on this being a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. And he instantaneously was looking at Matt Rule and Marty Herney, but especially Matt Rule, and going, wait a minute. Like if you if you are calling that wrong, I have concerns. And yeah. I so I think even with Matt Rule, there were some concerns earlier on. But he let it play out. And then at the end, he was like, no, I was right. Like when I started. Okay. And so I, I think for me, what was interesting about Reich was I did not have the feeling that this was going to happen like this. I thought it was going to be at the end. Like if it, if it happened, it was going to end up at the end of the season. But yeah. when I talked to somebody earlier today on the phone and I'm like, explain this to me, like the, the timing. And he just said, look. He is looking right now outward, and he knows there is a chance that when you look across the NFL, there might be five other coaches fired at the end of the season. Like, there's a possibility. So, in a way, David's like, if I'm going to fire him, and I feel like I'm going to fire him, and I'm dropping an F bomb coming out of the locker room in front of everybody. Right. Which was Let's just pretty, do it. Get it over with. Yeah. Get it over with and get started. You ever, right? Like, this is ever seen, you, you seen Lean on me, right? You see, lean yeah, on oh, me, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're gonna jump, don't fuck around with it. Do yeah, an expedition yeah, exactly. show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's going exactly. and jump. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's uh, it, it gives him time. Like like I, I get from a mechanic standpoint, from a um, an edge and a hiring standpoint, he gets to start that process now. He's not doing it behind Frank Reich's back. 
and the flag yeah. goes up. But but he also created a, a scenario here, a situation where that is a very it's it looks like a tar pit right now for any candidate. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, do I want to go get stuck in that and die? Because it's Ron Rivera, it's, Perry Fuel, Matt Rule, yep. Steve Wilkes, Frank Reich. Now he's got interim Chris Tabor, who he won't be keeping. And that's yep. just in the NFL. He's th fired three guys with his soccer, soccer. team since yeah, 2018. Soccer. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, it's, Mike, Mike, it's, Mike. He blew up to this day the costliest thing that he has done. Everyone's like, oh, the salary's paying. That is nothing, okay? When he blew up the Rock Hill, South Carolina practice facility, that complex, the $800 million complex, right? I, I had thought in my mind and I had read the figure that he had supposedly lost in, in blowing that whole thing up, which ended up in litigation and all this stuff and a lot of it's ongoing. I talked to someone who was in the, knew the kind of knew the details of what was going on there. And mm -hmm. they were like, listen, man, that's the number that's being reported is wrong. <laughs> like it is, mm -hmm. that's low. And I was like, what's the actual number? When he told me the actual number, and again, I can't report this because I don't, I, I'm not in the middle of the finances of that deal. I don't know, if right. but, but this person was. The number he told me, I'm straight up like he could probably fire another three head coaches and have their yeah. contracts be fully guaranteed and you're still not going to get to that number. And that's that's adding up all the other things he's blown up on the football end uh, in terms of like on the field and then the coaching staff. I mean, that, that practice facility. Alone. So what it tells me about about Tepper is. I don't want to say he doesn't care financially, but he has what I would say is almost like a maniacal ability to go. I'll burn through money. I don't get like, I'm going to keep yeah. burning through the money until it's right. And I, and whatever, like, I'm just, I, the, I don't think the money is the thing here. I, I actually think for him, I'm starting to think the pride for him. I think it really, really, really bothers him that he is, this is not getting right. And that when he goes into those ownership meetings with all those other billionaires, mm -hmm. having been so wildly successful as a hedge fund manager, he is the literal opposite right now uh, as a as a owner of a football team. He is he is right now probably considered the worst owner in the NFL. I was about to say, and and at what point? I mean, that's saying something because for the longest time, Daniel Snyder had that going away. There is mm -hmm. a there's a Snyder feel. There's a uh, there, there's a there's a Mark Davis feel. There's a um, Jimmy Haslam feel at one point. Uh, Jimmy Haslam been relatively stable lately. Um, like Jimmers, like you say, like a Jimmer say feel, but they're actually like in playoff contention right now. So maybe, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. But I mean, it's just like you know. And if you want to go to NBA, you know, James Dolan comes to mind. It's like. Yeah. It feels like this is just a, an organization that has no hope because a fish rots from the top. Like, again, I, I think two things can be true. Yeah, there's something to be said for, you know, if you know you made a mistake or feel like you made a mistake, moving on from said mistake. But when you're constantly burning through coaches and money, there's one common denominator here. Um, and, and will that be a deterrent? Because I was thinking that the only people I care about at this point in this story well, not the only people, but you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people and families involved, but it's like more immediately in terms of the firing of Frank Reich, I was like, okay, thankfully, because you look at Steve Wilkes last year, thankfully, Ejiro Evero and um, Thomas Brown were not the interim coaches. You know what I mean? Like, like th thankfully, they are not the guys that are going to be saddled with trying to you know, maintain this mess for the next guy. And now their future head coaching prospects are, you know, tainted, if you will. Right. Secondly, right. it's like, what about Bryce Young? Because, okay, you look at the offseason. Here comes Thomas Brown from the, uh, from the Rams in the McVay tree. And they're going to run his system. And Frank Reich's going to call plays from that system. Until Frank Reich is like, no, let's just do my system. And then they're installing Frank Reich's system. Then it's like, okay, Thomas, you're going to call the plays from my system. In my system, yeah. yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> then, then it's like, no, actually, 
I'm gonna call the plays, which was the last act of a desperate man. That's when it was really obvious that that, that he was on borrowed time. Then I'm gonna call the plays from 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 my system. Now it's back. To, they wasted a whole off season with this back and forth on the systems. Yeah. Like, yep. Are they already on their way to ruining Thomas Brown? So take, uh, excuse me, not Thomas Brown, ruining Bryce Young. So take two things. One, elaborate on that point about whether or not this is a tar pit. Is any uh, head coach, you know, with options or any head coaching prospect with options going to be interested in working for a guy like David David Tepper? And is Bryce Young the guy from this quarterback class who just had the misfortune of landing in the wrong circumstances? In terms of the head coach, I think um... – I don't think it's it's going to be some of the plethora of options. Okay, so let's say like the Titans for whatever reason. Let's say the Titans are like, ah, oh, yeah, Mike Vrabel. Maybe maybe we're willing to trade Mike Vrabel, right? Or or if it had been like um, Sean Payton when he's moving on from the Saints or whatever. I don't think um, now at this stage, having seen what they've gone through, um, seeing what the state of the roster is, knowing what the skill positions are. Um, Knowing that you uh, you have a quarterback that, by the way, is still a significant sort of outlier when it comes to what you want at the position, right? Like in terms of you know just physical build, right? We, we, the, right all the things right. that knocks on him going in the draft, right? And that, but that's right. your quarterback now. Um, I think it's you're talking about a coordinator, and I, I still think it would likely be someone on the offensive end um, who. Maybe doesn't have a ton of job opportunities out there, but you know, you you offer this coordinator a bunch of money and you say it's going to be a guaranteed contract. And hey, if we boot you, you're on our dime, you know, to the tune of whatever fifty million dollars or whatever the contract is. Or I think it's an old head retread who's not mm-hmm. going to get any other like opportunities out there. It's kind of and I don't I don't want to. I people won't remember this now, but l- let's be honest. When Mike McCarthy got the job in Dallas, I think there was an element of like, uh, you know, who's gonna like, what other teams are really gonna hire Mike? Like it was. I don't. I Mike probably had a little more upside than than I think even what would be offered um, the candidates that would be offered from Carolina. Now that said, Pepper could get really aggressive and say. I'm just going to pay you a ton of money. Like, you know, you do have a lot of options, but I'm going to pay you $20 million a season, you know, and, and I'm going to go after the biggest candidates I possibly can. And let's see if I can, you know, net Jim Harbaugh or whoever, just whatever the top of the cream of the crop. And you just offer him a ton of money. He has the ability to offer him a ton of money, buy them out of their anxiety, basically. You mm-hmm, know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Would he stay out of the way? Like would would he pay would he pay no. somebody so much money no. to will he be like okay I'm no. paying you this money do yeah yeah he just he's no. not wired like that no huh? he's it's yeah. it's not going to happen I don't there's nothing yeah. there's nothing in there is nothing indicating during his course as an owner um, that he will now stay out of football operations I and unless there's some sort of epiphany and he just feels like I've completely you know. My, you know, and but this, but that's the problem. If I were David Tepper, I would say, tell me the, in terms of the firings, in terms of the things that I, the the things I moved on from. Tell me what I did wrong. Like, tell me which one was the big yeah. grandiose right. mistake. Because so right. far, none of them were the big grandiose mistake. But then your counter should be to David. Maybe but Steve you, Wilkes. But you, may, maybe Steve Wilkes. But you know, again, he had a rationale that I cannot necessarily sure. argue with with Steve Wilkes, which was. We're right. going to get a quarterback. I want an offensive coach that's not going to leave him. I don't want to get a coordinator like Ben Johnson, who does a great job with him. And the next thing I know, Ben Johnson's a candidate for all these jobs. And now I got to find another coordinator that fits. I don't want to be Josh Allen without Brian. Yeah, Gable, no, I mean, right? he, I mean, he, he wanted he wanted Ben Johnson to be the head coach, and Ben Johnson may be the guy that he throws a, a shit ton of money at. But I guess what I would argue is, where is it written that? And this is the flaw in that logic. Where is it written? that it has to be an offensive coach for your quarterback to be successful. Because Peyton Manning had his best years under Tony Dungy, you know. Um, obviously, we know who Tom Brady was attached to, a, a defensive coach. It's like you need a guy who can lead a team. And, and again, that's where Reich, to my knowledge, fell short more than anything, not just <laughs> schematically, because because the coaches would also point to personnel, which I'll get to that in a second. But, okay, but Mike, let me stop ahead. you there, though, real quick. Real quick. 
Please. You just said two guys who are like on the Mount Rushmore of quarterbacks. Like that's a, no, but that's can, a, but, no, there's, but there's a, no, but there's a long, but there's a long list. I mean, okay, when's the last time the Pittsburgh Steelers have hired an offensive coach? Like right, Roethlisberger. I mean, I get it. Like there's you know they're, they're, right, right, with, with Cowher and Tomlin. Like I don't. I think the mm-hmm. I think the side of the ball as the coach is overrated. When it okay. comes to the quarterback or when it comes to the team in general, you need a guy who can lead. I get the logic of, well, I don't want a, a, co- a coordinator carousel. I do get that. But guess what you got right now? A coordinator carousel because your head coach took the play, like, couldn't decide what system he wanted to run, took the play calling after he gave him the play calling. It's like now your quarterback screwed up. Because of, because of a head coach hire that was flawed when you could have taken, kept the Steve Wilkes or just hired the best guy regardless of his area of expertise and said, okay, lead this, lead this team the right way. So that, that's my thing on that. Um, I, don't, I don't know how, how we got on that part. Uh, I lost my oh, time, but I guess I just oh, I, yeah. Go I do ahead. want to answer the second half of your question. Oh, yeah. You no. did ask me. Oh, yes. You asked, me about, yeah. you asked me about Bryce, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Thank you. I would say that Bryce, I look at Bryce the way that I looked at Trevor Lawrence under Urban Meyer, where I was mm. like, uh, uh okay. okay, like, is is this guy going to be okay? Like, is this, you know, there were things that were going on under Urban Meyer with Trevor Lawrence where we're like, oh man, like he's, he just, he's something's off. Right. Like, it's not is he really well. all that. Yeah. 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 Is he, yeah. yeah. Is this, was this just a, yeah. you know, way overblown uh, draft yeah. assessment and he has more limitations? Yeah. And then you got him with the right coach, and we've seen him right. now get back on that upward trajectory. That's another guy that we expected. That's another guy. So, you, you talk yeah, about right. you talk about Mike McCarthy in Dallas. There's Doug Peterson. Nobody Doug was Peterson, like yeah. you know jumping for joy when they you know retraded Doug Peterson in Jacksonville from Philadelphia. That's another type of guy that you're talking about. This was the this was the thought I had. Um, the thought I had was when you say involved in football operations. That's what I wanted. I wanted to ask you. How involved are we talking when it comes to Tepper? Is he just around? Is he hovering? Is he tapping his foot and his watch talking about his biological clock is ticking like this? Or or is he like, hey, to Bucky Jones is a press corner? Like, is is you know, like how involved are we talking when we talk about an, an, a hands-on owner? I think um I I am I am very confident in saying that he weighed in on the quarterback evaluation. Okay. But but he I will say this. I don't know. I would question the idea that he thinks he's a scout. I think that he talks okay. to people and comes to consensus opinions in his own mind. And I don't necessarily mm-hmm. mean just people inside his building, right? Like he, mm-hmm. he is um he is a searcher of ideas. He's a searcher of data. He is a searcher of analysis. And he doesn't mm-hmm. limit himself to, well, I'm just going to ask the GM or I'm just going to ask this scout or that scout on our staff or our pro personnel director or the head coach or whatever. You know, I think a good example of this is like when he went through a general manager search, right? Like he talked to a lot of people I know and they were, it was a varied, they were really varied field. And uh, you know, he leans on owners. I think he leans on high level agents. I think he leans on sometimes analysts um, that he trusts. So it's, uh, you know, even people he's moved on from, I think he still taps some of those people at times. Um, and, you know, so I think that in certain personnel decisions, I think he does weigh in on those decisions. But Everything's a meeting, right? Everything's uh, there's a lot of meetings. There's a lot of like constant. Can I just be an email? Of, so, no, I mean there's, there's, there's a lot of there's a, like when he's in the building, you know, he's you know there's there's a lot of oversight, and yeah. so I think there's that, and then, um, I'll give you an example. So when they were, I don't want to say they were close. When they had, when they felt like they had a Matt Stafford trade lined up, right? Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. under Matt Rule and Matt Rule and Scott Fitterer. They go to the Senior Bowl, right? And they're thinking like, hey, we, we've been talking to the Lions. We feel pretty good about this. We, we feel like there's sort of a structure, a deal structure in place. Now all we got to do is let's let's close it. Let's let's go in. Let's figure this out. Let's. Brad Holmes is picking up the phone. We're liking what we're hearing. Let's close it. At the last minute, like when it was time to close the deal, Tepper said, ah, uh, I want to know more about his medical. I want to know more about his back, you know, this, this back injury and like all these. And so all of a sudden 
you had guys who had tried to get this trade on 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 the rails and ready to go and they're like wait whoa whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> like what are you doing we can't stop now like this is the worst time to to now hit the pause button because we got to close this and if we don't close it someone else is going to close it and the rams did two days later the rams closed it and so that kind of involvement is exactly what like coaches and gms they don't want that they don't want the hey we know okay we've all agreed we're going to go after stafford and now we feel like we're right there and now the owner steps in and says ah okay this is the concern that i have i'm not saying that that's not his place but that is a a direct like that's a direct action event that changed potentially the future of this organization significantly which takes me exactly you know where i like to go because so correct me if i'm wrong this was this was scott fitterer's first draft the gm right like cuz didn't rule have personnel authority am i am i right uh, about that or wrong what yeah, I mean, I don't. Okay. I think it was. I I don't think it was all rules draft. Um, okay. You know, prior to this, like I, I feel. And I, then I, I'm, respect, re- always, respectfully, success has many parents, failures an orphan. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know who, who, who? Okay, but I guess Wait, my Mike, point is this: Mike, is, yeah, Mike, you're not going to get them to. And this is the, to me. I right. will. I will give you next month's salary if you can tell me. Who exactly yeah. made the Bryce Young decision? Okay, like I don't. That's that's how crazy some of this stuff is because I've heard a couple. Well, different yeah, what have you heard on that? I've okay, the narrative that, I heard it the, the, now. I probably heard the the company line, but what have you heard? Go ahead. I, I mean, I've I've heard. Well, it was after things started to be shaky. Well, you know, really, David was the one who wanted Bryce. Like David was sold on Bryce Young as being the pick. Whereas uh, I don't know, other guys on the staff were really really like cj stroud and i'm like is that because of what's going on right now with stroud or is you know like how true is that now i heard the flip side was no it was it was all a consensus opinion they you know they went over everything and that they came to a shared belief that bryce young was the number one so pick. that's so the latter is <laughs> the, the cynic in me and plus i just you know you're my main man i i i, I trust you you know like nobody else the first one is it, it sounds like it could be true, but I've I've heard the latter more, uh, in fairness and and and, and, and transparency that it was a consensus. But what I also found encouraging was that to a person in the organization, whether it was on the executive level, whether it was on the staff level, they felt like they had failed Bryce Young. And as much as this pisses off Texans fans, I think you and I talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's like. The Panthers believe that if Bryce Young were in C.J. Yeah, Stroud's circumstances, right now, sidebar: <laughs> nobody thought C.J. Stroud's circumstances were that good <laughs> coming good. into the season. Yeah. Nobody Thank was you. like, Thank "Oh, you. what All a right. what a great yeah. offensive line, yeah. what a great receiving yeah. core." So, but but nonetheless, it's like, oh, if you switch places, Stroud <laughs> would be struggling in Carolina. Bryce would be thriving in Houston. But what that actually does beg the question, though, is about Bryce Young. And I'll get back to the – I had a larger point about, about Scott Fitter, but I'll get back to him in a second. But it's, is, is Bryce Young – because you used this word earlier, elevate. Is he an elevator? Because the other thing I've heard from NFL people is that Stroud – and maybe this is all convenient in revisionist history given what he's done. Stroud is more of an elevator, whereas Bryce is that consummate person who needs things around him yeah. to, be, to be ideal, and he can then, you know – be, excel if he's got protection if he's got weapons if he's got the right scheme he can be a great point guard whereas stroud is that person who lifts everybody is that unfair here's that, here's your, yes your face is yes, saying that's unfair. unfair yeah it's unfair yeah. we need five years on this okay because i'm going to tell you in the preseason yeah. when stroud was struggling i heard yeah hey man he needs a clean pocket Okay, like he's got to have a clean test. pocket. If he, and he, yeah, yeah and that's, that's two tests. And, and hey, if he doesn't have a clean pocket, he needs things. He needs first round yeah. receivers around him and all that talent yeah. at Ohio State yeah. and, the, and the first round yeah. left tackle. And and then all of a sudden, he, right. Like he, and now, but now it's, oh, no, no, it was Bryce who needs all that stuff around him. It, you, yeah. The truth is, we yeah. don't know who, like, who can truly elevate, elevate the players around them until we've given them, like, a five-year run 
to prove it. Go through different yeah. scenarios. Go through different uh, situations. See what they look like when the talent is chalked. See what they look like when the talent is is empty. Okay, and um, I, I mean, look, even this season, we've gone through how many iterations of Brock Purdy. He's an MVP. Oh, he can't do it without Debo. He go. Right. He's now his left tackle. But some, like, but, but somebody got to make them throws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like, it, it's just we don't. Right. It takes. I think it. it it so much bullshit this season. Or that's, 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 that's what we're saying. There's just so much bullshit to have to sift through, right? <laughs> yeah, we're all we, we, we're all like you know, give me the filet mignon, but I want it in the drive-through. Like, I mean, it's yeah. it's yeah. it's we can't give you something that big and that major without mm. some time and some space and some circumstance to see what it all ultimately um, looks like. So it's. Uh, I will I will say this though. First off, great point about Stroud because you know Stroud's line's been messed up, right? Um, the skill positions, no one was all that impressed by the skill positions until all of a sudden Tank Dell's the second leading right. uh receiver, rookie receiver in yardage, and Nico Collins when he's healthy has been great, and Dalton Schultz has been great. And right. you know, so that, that changes things. Yeah, yeah no Brown, yeah. right. I mean, and so that changes um the dynamic of what that looks like. Whereas like Carolina, you know, look, Terrace Marshall's not either you know, is Adam Thielen, like really? Like I, I get I get when you look at the the pieces around him, plus the offensive line's really bad. It's not it, it, Tennessee's offensive line, worse, worse than Carolina's offensive line, no doubt. And yet you have seen moments from Will Levis where you're like, mm-hmm. now he now granted, so De, DeAndre Hopkins helps. Uh Chiga Quankro helps. Uh, you know, Traylon Burks when he's healthy helps. Um, hand it off but, to Derrick Henry. <laughs> hand it, yeah, yeah, oh, right. Jeez, what I'm thinking. Yeah, hand yeah. off to Derrick Henry. Yeah. So, you know, I I think we just need to calm down on, on this idea that Bryce Young is just an absolute bust now. We we can't even get through a single season anymore. No, 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 not, not, no, not at all. And I wasn't perpetuating that by saying he's a bust. By no means. It's just going back to this idea of he has not – been in a position because like which one is it is he has not been put in a position to succeed slash if you traded places because it's, it's probably let me see if i can get this right it's either one or the other maybe it's a combination maybe it's neither but it's like hey he's not been put in a position to succeed by the panthers and if you gave him what cj stroud has then he'd be thriving the same way as Stroud is, slash Stroud would be struggling the same way that Young is. But on the other hand, like you said, nobody was talking about all the, you know, the supporting cast members and the and the great circumstances that CJ Stroud was walking into in Houston. So I guess you're right. It's just it takes time, but they but we're trying to figure out we're trying to figure out who to blame, I guess, what it comes down to, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, somebody's gotta right. be blamed. Yeah, somebody's exactly gotta right. be blamed at one in ten. So that's what that's what I was getting at when I asked you about the Fitterer question earlier. When about what, who was responsible for the previous drafts, because what would make matters worse, and you talked about earlier, uh, David Tepper paying some coach, buying away his anxiety, I think is the way you put it, because now, like, follow me here, was firing Frank Reich, was that just about Frank Reich, and like I said, his flaws and his shortcomings as a leader and his missteps, or was it the first step in another organizational reset. Like, what of Scott Fitterer? Because I think, look, they gave up the farm to go and get Bryce Young. They seem to have a plan in place. They got a lot of money to spend in free agency in the next two off seasons. But they, of course, don't have their first-round pick. Chicago's sitting pretty right now. But, like, if you're David Tepper or Charles Robinson, do you expect David Tepper – to look at this in, in the big picture and say, okay, I missed on Reich, but I need to give these guys time yeah. to beef up the personnel. Because again, some might say the coaching has been bad. Some might say the personnel isn't all it was cracked up to be. Right. I think the personnel people will acknowledge they get, like they traded Christian McCaffrey. They traded DJ Moore to get Bryce Young. It's like, does Tepper give that part of the building time? Or does he go and find a coach and say, hey, here's $20 million a year or whatever it is he wants to blow on him. And you got complete control of the organization to bring in your own person to to run personnel. And now we're starting from scratch again 
further damaging Bryce Young. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it depends on who the coaching candidate is, right? Like if it, yeah. if he if he does snag a big fish or whatever, or who cares who he likes, right? So if he snags who he wants and that person says to him, okay, like I'll give you what the mandate is right now and, and what makes me worried for Scott Fitter and everyone else in that building. When they, when it ended with Matt Rule, the mandate that went out through the rest of the building, like that, literally that week was, we have, I think the period of time was like three years to get the quarterback situation resolved. And, mm -hmm. and I think what that meant was not three years to get a quarterback. We have three years to right. get a quarterback and, and we better be up and running good. Like, like we're running. In three years, did that clock God. restart with Bryce Young or not? No, no, no. no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think the way it was yeah. honestly, I think the way it was received inside the building was yeah. tepper, tepper time. Cut it in half. Tepper that's time. What, yeah. That's, that's yeah. what we call it. Tepper time. Tepper time yeah. is half. So if mm -hmm. he says he is, he's giving you three years, you have eighteen months. So we're going to be up and running mm -hmm. with a quarterback in eighteen months. Okay, has it been eighteen months since Matt Rule was fired? Getting pretty close. <laughs> it's like you know so to me i think whoever he wants um if they want a general manager and and what the pitch would be from from tepper is what your job is going to be is come in and let's mold this and we i think i believe we have the quarterback we made our commitment bryce young's our guy now we got to come in we got to mold the whole thing around it so if that means moving on from the general manager, if that means, you know, wiping out certain elements of the roster, find out what's usable. If we're starting from scratch, we're really, it, I think in Tepper's mind, you're not starting from scratch if you do believe you have the quarterback. Now it's, do I have the people, or, or do I have the people on the executive level, whether it's the coaching staff or the, the front office staff, do I have the people now in place to make the right decisions to add to the pieces around him? And so, that, and and this that to me is the is the key decision. Like, okay, it's like, like I said, this wasn't just an impulsive. Like, damn it, we're one in ten, and CJ Stroud is an MVP candidate. Fire Frank Reich. Like, this 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 wasn't this wasn't that. This this was a long time coming. This was building. This was this was the early recognition that Reich wasn't the guy that they thought he was going to be. So that's fine if it's a coaching decision, not an organizational direction decision. Because to me, Charles, it's like now you really because I'm and I guess you could tell from this conversation, even though he's burned through coaches and burned through money, I'm trying, trying real hard, Ringo, to like <laughs> see this from a Tepper perspective. And like, okay, you know, do you just say, hey, I hired Frank Reich, I'm going to give him time? Or do you say, you know, no, man, this ain't it. I, I, I appreciate the, the, the fire fast aspect. But what he can't afford to do, to me, is say to your front office, to Scott Fitter and company, let's go all in to get this quarterback. We all agree that this is the guy. Let's sacrifice the draft capital that it takes to get this quarterback. And then hold them responsible for not having the personnel around him after less than one season. I think that part he has to see through. So I think if, if I'm advising David Tepper, you said he calls analysts, he hasn't called me yet. If I'm advising David Tepper, I'm saying give Fitterer the opportunity to hire another coach, obviously with your consultation, as opposed to pulling the plug on the entire thing, because you did go all in on this move, and that move came at a cost, which was draft capital and personnel and a, and a bona fide number one receiver. L let's see how they spend your money these next two off seasons. Do they have a plan? That would be my question to to to, to fitter if I'm Tepper, and I'll ask it to you. Do they have a plan for Bryce Young? For the to get this up and running and thriving, let's say in the next eighteen months to two years. If they don't have a plan, then maybe you go in a different direction holistically. But right now, I'm trying to distinguish between this being a Frank Reich problem and a, a, and, a, and an organizational reset problem. But well, Mike, how Does that can you have? A, yeah, absolutely. But how can you have a plan? How could you claim to have a plan when? There was offensive scheme ambiguity in the offseason, right? Coming into this, like, what scheme are we going to mm -hmm. run, right? And now you have taken the person you identified, you chose 
to pair with your quarterback and say, okay, this is a trajectory going outward with these two guys. And you, you've now blown up that person. I don't. Who, but, wait, article, but who is you? But who is you? Is you. Tepper. Okay, but this is what I'm saying. No, I'm saying the, the personnel people, what is their plan? I'm sorry. I meant the personnel plan. Like, I, no, I'm saying if you're no. Tepper. Okay. Mike, there's I don't no think there's a person. The two? I don't think. No, there's not. No, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. There's no way. Absolutely mm-hmm. not. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, is a, it is a Tepper plan. Okay. It's a 100%. Mm-hmm. We need to be clear about gotcha. that, right? Yeah. Tepper yeah. is the one. Every Everything they do. And, and I'll give you another example of this. The Deshaun Watson mm-hmm. situation. Their pursuit of oh, they Deshaun were deep, They were deep on that, yeah. They were, they were deep, especially at the start. And they were so deep that the initial offer of three firsts, and I think it was three thirds, that was Tepper. That was te- I think when when that phone had to be picked up and, and Nick Casario was called and he was irate, he's all pissed off that they're trying to make this offer for a guy he didn't want to trade – I don't think the people in the building, including some decision makers, were fully comfortable with offering that much for Deshaun Watson at that time. And to me, yeah. what does that speak to? He so so he stepped in on the Matt Stafford trade. He stimulated the pursuit of Deshaun Watson. I think the one time he was talked into a plan, it was Teddy Bridgewater, and that was it. I think that was it for him. I think he was like, "No, I trusted this." And that was a mistake. I should right. not have trusted so, this. So, so to your point, if he if he squashed Stafford and was all in on Deshaun Watson, even if the rest of the building came around to it, it would be out of character for him not to have been at the forefront of the Bryce Young selection and the trade up to get Bryce Young. There's like, no it, way. It, 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 no there's way no way he was like, "What do y'all think?" What, what? Not even just without his approval, but like. That's who he wanted, so that's who everybody else wanted. Is what it sounds like is most likely how that went down. I do think there's an ability. Like, like let's say that is who he wanted, but let's say mm-hmm. I do think there's an ability for him to want Bryce Young, right? To talk to Nick Saban and have someone who mm-hmm. he respects a great deal as a leader, mm-hmm. as a football mind, mm-hmm. as all these different things tell him this kid has the goods and be like, okay, that's my guy. Like, that's who I'm going to trust in. Um, and for everybody in the building to, not everybody, but for enough of the decision makers in the building to, to agree, to go, yeah, we're on, you're like, yeah, we believe it too. Yeah. Especially so, if it's close. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I think, I don't think it's, hey, he believed this. Now everybody jumped on board. Um, okay. I think they can, I think they can say there's consensus, but I don't, I, they do not draft Bryce Young 100%. They do not right. draft Bryce Young if he does not like Bryce Young. It just, it's just—it's right. just not. And anybody who says that's not true is lying. Right. There's no way he was talked into another quarterback. No way. That's right. dumb. Right. So, so having said that, spinning it forward, what I'm saying is, it sounds like what you're telling me is, it doesn't matter what Scott Fitterer and company's personnel plan may be to build around Bryce Young over the next two years, it matters what Tepper thinks or wants to do or how he just feels or who he's listening to. It matters what Tepper thinks of that plan. Like you can, they can have a good plan. If Tepper doesn't like it, they're done. Okay. (laughs) It's that simple. Like, like, so in that way, it does matter. You do want to have like, Hey, you want to have a good plan. You want to be able to sell Tepper on this. Can can they sell him on it? Yeah. There you go. Yep. Yep. That's it. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. so from in one sense, it, it, it's all that matters is Tepper. But in another sense, you know, you just have to convince him. You have to sell him on what your plan ultimately is. You're not going to say, here's the plan. And Tepper is going to go, yeah, that's I don't know about that. No, then it's done. He's not even yeah. going to say, I don't know about that. He's going to go. No. Or he's or he's not just going to trust you blindly because he hired you no. and say, no. OK, I trust you to execute your plan. Yeah. No, not so unless uh, not unless something changes. Like not unless there is, mm-hmm. and and I will ask you this. We've done this a long time. Can you remember any owner in all the years we've covered this? You know, we're talking changing how they do uh, things. Between, between, yeah, between the two of us, there's what forty plus years of experience covering the NFL. Do you ever mm-hmm. remember an owner changing their stripes, like being like, you know what, I need to get the hell out of the way. Well, I reference I reference you know to Bucky Jones the press co- corner. I think Robert Kraft evolved. I think okay. he was much more. 
he feel. I mean, but I, how much? But I, I th- but I think results mattered. I think I think they call lightning. You look, you, I'm talking to Brady Way uh, <laughs> himself. Um, I think results matter. And I think they, you know, a blind squirrel found a nut at pick 199, and they got Tom Brady, and their fortunes changed, and it made it easier to step back. Like I would, okay. ha- I would, I would add to your question: What owner or chairman, if you prefer, has changed? When or or, ha, or has changed his approach when things are going poorly, if that yeah, right, you know what I mean. Like it's easy to step back and let your coach do his thing when you're right. winning games and it, right. yeah, and the checks are rolling in. Yeah. but when you're one in ten, which which owner has been like, you know what? Maybe the problem is actually me. Right, right. <laughs> when you're burning through coaches, <laughs> you know what? I'm the guy. I, I, I'm not to your point. I'm not expecting David Tepper to call a press conference and say, guys. You know what? It's my fault. <laughs> I'm going to step back and I'm going to let the people I hire. I'm going to hire people. I'm going to hire talented people and let them do their jobs. I don't think that's. I don't yeah, think. I, I don't, don't expect that. I've never seen somebody do that. Maybe they just. And, maybe Jerry Jones finds an undrafted Tony Romo, thanks to Bill <laughs> Parcells, and then a fourth round Dak Prescott, and you know those quarterbacks make all the difference in the world. Maybe that's all it comes down to. You know. And I think you make the great point. It's it is especially in times of failure. Yeah, there, if anything, I think owners press themselves more firmly into the situation when there's failure. Which which you know, there's logic to that. Like it's not going well. Like what well, you need, yeah. you, you've clearly done something right in your life to be able to own this team. You probably trust your gut. You trust your intuition. You trust your knowledge and intellect. So you want to apply those things when. Things are broken, but yeah, I don't. In in my mind, when in terms of like things going wrong, I struggle to think of any ownership uh, group that has said, "Right, we need to go ahead and step back and, and hand this off to someone else." Although, um, or just do things differently, yeah, or just do things differently. There, maybe there's this opportunity. I, I'm not saying this is what happens, but if you are going to do that as an owner. There is going to be potentially a candidate, and who knows how much longer he will coach, but if Bill Belichick comes free from the Patriots or they decide they want, they're open to trading him or whatever, that is the one candidate where I could see some owner out and there. And the going, keys over? Yeah, going, you know what? What I've been doing up until this point, my involvement has not really helped, and here is someone that I know organizationally can run everything, who's, who, is, who is basically, you know, I'm, I'm – Chairman Mao and I'm off Dallas and they're handling everything else. And that is the one uh, now do I think like Tepper is going to go, yeah, let's go get bill. And I'm going to hand it all over to bill and hope that he can last another 10 years and completely reshape the organization. And, you know, I don't think that's realistic, but um, why not? That's a good, that's a good point about, I, I, uh, it feels like a Tepper move. Hell, matter of fact, Charles, we get, we also get an old. I think you brought that up weeks ago. I feel like you brought that up. We, I feel like I feel like we talked about this when, when we talked about Belichick. Didn't you say Tepper? It feel. I mean, it feels like you I said Tepper. Know. It, it feels know. like. <laughs> well, look, I, I know Tepper. I, okay, look, I will say this: Tepper is close to craft, right? Like he takes Kraft's yep. counsel on a number of things, right? And you mentioned um, Nick Saban. And, Hell, and, I, I'm yeah, connecting Nick, dots between Belichick, yeah. Saban, but and Bryce Young. The, you the know? reason why, the reason why I question that is um mm-hmm. because I don't it's again, Bill's in his seventies. And you're and it's mm-hmm. like if you're going to go and do this and you're gonna reshape your whole organization, I think it would have to be like, okay, well, Bill, who's the, your successor? Because you might only want to reshape the organization, then five years down you're gonna step away. I need to know there's going to be somebody there to run the operation that you've just set up, right? Like it's, you know, yeah. he's, he's basically setting up the Patriots franchise somewhere else. We've seen that fail <laughs> over and over and over. Um, it's just maybe if, like, look, if, if Belichick was 52, different, different situation then. Um, but I yeah. think the shelf life of Belichick is the question. I would say two things. I would say my expectation is that they don't take no for an answer this time from Ben Johnson offensive coordinator in Detroit and the other thing is and we talked about he hasn't gotten it wrong yet so far time will tell 
probably would have been better served keeping Steve Wilkes and keeping a good thing mm-hmm. going. Ask Mark Davis. Yeah. Ask Mark Davis how that went. You know, we we saw two recent examples of impulsive owners uh, making a change from Rich Basaccia when he did a great job as an interim, and Steve Wilkes when he did a great job as an interim, and look what that got him. The other two thing. The other thing is he's got two coordinators, and I mentioned them earlier, and uh, Thomas Brown and, and Ezio Evero who are going to be head coaches somewhere else. Like, I've heard Thomas Brown is a cross between Sean McVay and Mike Tomlin, and Mm -hmm. Everell's name has come up quite a bit um, in head coaching conversations. I was, trying, was, was, I was trying to get Thomas Brown the Michigan State job. I wish I could have got I was like, man, <laughs> please let Michigan State hire this guy. <laughs> like, you know? And so, I, and so, like I said, I'm glad they're not interims because we know the history specifically of black head coaches as interim coaches. But I think what Tepper, if, he, if he's not careful, is going to look up and see this. He had two head coaching prospects in the building, two young, dynamic head coaching prospects in the building. And because he's got his mind fixated on what people are saying and who's hot and and what he thinks he wants, that he's gonna look outside the building. If if he wants to if he wants to re- rectify any mistake, it's like wait a second, is there somebody in here, you know, that I need to give a, a more serious consideration to, as opposed mm-hmm. to what I think a head coach looks like or where he uh, or where he comes from. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a fast. It's gonna be fascinating. It's gonna be fascinating. Still, one, one way or the other. Still time. There's still time. Like there's still, I'm I'm curious if this change is made, and let's say Thomas Brown is able to influence the offense in some way that wasn't happening before, right? Like in terms of schematically, yeah. right? Scheme wise, right? Does he look at it differently? And, yeah, and it's yeah, and then suddenly, like, what if if Bryce Young starts to flash? He shows, hey, here's the ceiling. That's the ceiling that's still there. I, you know, I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility that David Tepper goes to Thomas Brown and says, you're going to be in the group of, of candidates. Like we're going to, we're going to interview you yeah. for this job. Here's what you did with Bryce. Right. That's what I was looking for. We should have just run this scheme from the start. Correct. That whole, because he knows process. the circumstances. Right. He does. He, he, know, he, he knows. knows yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. He knows yeah. what happened. Yeah. So, and, and yeah. to me, that that helps Thomas Brown in that scenario because you have an owner who already knows, like, I know how that went. You know, and mm-hmm. and now this guy is showcased to me. Well, this is how we should have done it from the smart start. And so, you know, there's there's still time to affect this. Def- absolutely. Hey, the one other thing I want to hit you with before I let you go is I want to juxtapose the Carolina situation with the Denver situation. Cause it wasn't that long ago where the epicenter of the trade deadline was the Denver Broncos. Yeah. And you know, was Sean Payton in over his head? <laughs> at 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 best, was it karma for talking shit about Nathaniel Hackett uh, <laughs> coming back to bite him? And you know, and I'm gonna talk about this later on. But the assistant coach of the year right now, for my money, is Vance Joseph. Because um, to go from giving up 70 points in 2023 to, with apologies to Baltimore and Cleveland, the best defense in the league for the last five games or so. Mm-hmm. cannot say enough about the job that that staff and that organization has done under new ownership. You know, like we, I, I, you and, cause you and I talked privately about how this could work at the trade deadline. Cause Sean Payton end up with, you know, uh, with, with Caleb Williams, who he had a lot of, uh, you know, admiration for at USC as does everybody. And now here, here are the Broncos hottest team in the league, Look like they're about to make a playoff push. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think I saw a stat where it was like, you know, as you said, they gave up that seventy points against the Dolphins, but then they've given up like eighty points in the last five games, which is crazy. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, seventy-one and eighty and five. Um, no, I, I. The credit, I will say, your number one, Vance. I do think getting Randy Gregory outside the organization, getting Frank Clark outside of the organization. To me, I do think there was an element of rock, locker room stuff in there, like the chemistry stuff, right? And But now I do believe the party line, which at the time was, we want to get some of these guys, young guys, more time. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. we think they can affect particularly the front end of this defense. And they have. You know, the front end of the defense is uh, much more difficult to handle with the younger pass rushers that they've now elevated um, in the scheme. And um, so there's that. And I, and I do think Vance deserves a, a ton of credit. 
I will say I'm surprised. Like I, I was, I'm stunned the turnaround that has occurred. And when I look at Sean and, and if you're going to give him, you know, his props in this, it was um, like when they lost that game to Miami, it, him saying, we're going to watch the tape. We're not going to burn it. We're going to do like, this is yeah. how we're going to do this. And then making yeah. some roster changes that he felt like they needed to make, make. And he didn't deal away. And I think, again, I think this had to do with the fact that they won an important game before the, right before the trade deadline, which I think significantly cools the situation. But he didn't get rid of Cortland Sutton, who's having a really good season for the Denver Broncos. Yeah. He didn't get rid of yeah. Jerry Judy, who once again is now showing signs of being a viable player. He kept Adam Troutman as as the top tight end, um, you know, for blocking purposes or whatever. And slowly we've seen Russ be a little better protected. We've seen him become a little more confident. And when he threw that touchdown to Troutman in the end zone on Sunday, it was Mm -hmm. a beautiful catch, but it was also a beautiful pass. And it was me. I was like, huh. Like that kind of looks like like a Russ. Like that looks a little more like Russ. Like he you can he's starting to gather some of that confidence. And I look, I give Sean credit because I was clowning him. I was, you know, I just, when all that blew up at the beginning, I was just like, this is just, this yeah. is a disaster. And yeah, no, you that's, alone. Again, I, I don't know what to say, except good for you. You did it your way, you know, and it's, and it's working and you're going to have an ability now to, to try to you know make your way into the playoffs, I still think there's a slate in front of you where you're going to we're going to see some more measurement. But um, turning around the way that they have is, I, I think it speaks to I, the quality. It speaks of coach to what we're is. talking about, but it also speaks to what we're talking about with Carolina and patience and perspective. And there is something to be said for staying the course. And culture changes take time. Um, speaking of making changes, though, real quick, I just got a heads up. That the Panthers, this was another issue we didn't talk about. I know we talked, we literally did a whole podcast on the Panthers. I didn't have that on my bingo. This morning when I woke up, I was like, huh, what am I going to focus on with Charles <laughs> Robinson? <laughs> what, like, what, what's the theme for the day? And then, you know, David Tepper happened. Um, the Panthers also fired uh, Deuce Staley, assistant head coach and running backs coach, and Josh McCown. Now, I haven't done any digging on that aspect of it, but I do know there was also. A question of it, it looked good on paper when you had this all star cast of coaches, mm-hmm. but were there too many voices in Bryce Young's head as well? Yeah, From Frank Reich to Thomas Brown to Josh McCown, like that's a lot of a lot of alphas in the room on, well, on the offense. Say nothing of Jim Caldwell is probably the most qualified of, of them all, especially if it's um, when there's a lot of quarterback voices in organizations and they're not in sync. Yeah. And I'm not saying they weren't, yeah. but yeah. I'll give you like I remember in Philly when Wentz was going through it there, and look, I know it didn't work mm-hmm. out for him when he moved on anyway, but I do remember a time when there were like three or four quarterbacks on staff, and they were all doling out different advice on how he needed to fix himself. Here's what he needed to do mechanically. Here's what he did. You know, here's the leadership. And pretty soon it was just like, remember when Justin Fields was like, I just. You know, like yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I got too much stuff going on here. I just don't want to think about yeah. this, like all this stuff, and I, it's, it's, yeah. me, it's messing with my head. You know, so I, I do. I wonder if maybe that's a little bit of, um, a little bit. I, I, you know, I'm very curious too, though, if we ever hear the story about how they landed on Bryce Young. I'd be curious to know who Josh McCown liked between those two because I felt like in the draft process, Josh really, really liked. Um, Stroud and mm. it's you know this is this is going to be one that will be unraveling for a little bit so it'll be fun or is it just one of those things where it's like the truth is just somewhere in the middle that's not fun but it's somewhere in the middle where it's like and you could also I, th- I think everything you're saying Charles adds up because you could also you could also like both both these guys and this is the I, we, we got to wrap this up and we can go on I, this is why I love talking I love I love emptying your notebook and we got so many different directions we could always go. But, like, we both know that NFL history is littered with players, specifically quarterbacks, who through no fault of their own were born on the wrong side of the tracks, if you will. Yep. Or just, like, they, they just they, they were drafted into the wrong situation. 
And yep. it's like, who's to say that both these quarterbacks couldn't, couldn't and can't still be, to your point, which you keep hammering home, it's like it's early, can't still be good. Likewise, who's to say that you couldn't like them both? But if, if pressed into making a decision, you take Bryce Young, which is why my life motto is there's no right or wrong decision. You make a decision, you make it right. And the Panthers have not made that decision right. We don't know if they made the wrong decision, but they have not made that decision right as of yet. Well, Chuck, I appreciate you, you man. Huh. <laughs> Before, as we sign off, wasn't that long ago that you and I were talking to each other about like, Man, is Lamar like? Does he hate the Ravens? And this is just he's going to have to go somewhere else. He has to be traded. Was the injury real? Oh my gosh, could this be any worse? Have we seen the best of Lamar? And how's everything kid? Oh my <laughs> like, god! Like, <laughs> Gee whiz! Talk about freezing cold takes, man. Like, yeah, we, <laughs> there, there's not just takes. There's like there's just storylines that are like. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that long ago, you know? It wasn't that long ago where we were like, oh, this is just, this is... What a, you know what, what I'm afraid of? And... <laughs> you know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid that that's how, that's how we're going to look back on Belichick. Like, like we're going to look back on this entire season of firing Belichick. What, what was the scene in Game of Thrones uh, when when uh, when, the, when the queen made the walk? What's, what's her name? What's, what's, oh, what's, what's, uh, what's, you know what I'm talking about? Not yeah, Khaleesi. The, uh, no, not Khaleesi. Um, the walk, the, the walk of shame. Try, you're trying to trying to get me go back on series I haven't watched. And in... anyway, <laughs> the people watching and listening, they'll remember it. But uh, but point being, like, it's like this entire season has been that for Bill Belichick. We just been throwing shit at Bill Belichick oh, as he walks Mike, down the street. Mike, Mike, <laughs> what if Mike. what if he survives this? <laughs> yeah, that's what I believe. Me, I have these moments where I'm like, what if he doesn't get fired? What if he drafts whoever a quarterback, right? Like Drake May, whoever with the pick. They have all this money to right. spend in free agency. And then what if next right. year it's the revenge tour? And I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> like, and, and it feels like it is Cersei. I, it I, is I, I looked possible. at this. Cer- Cer- Cersei, <laughs> Cersei Lannister. Cersei Lannister. That's what I was trying to think. Yeah, like, you know, there you go. yeah, yeah. Cersei <laughs> Lannister. Uh, that's what I was trying to remember. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I, right? Like, because because it's just like. Nobody said anything, and he just letting all of us just fill this vacuum with speculation about Belichick and how he's going to get fired and if he's going to go to the Panthers or wherever. And it's like, what if he just come? In, what if he just like, yeah, okay, I'm, 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 I got, I see you. I'm keeping receipts. Like he yeah. needs an excuse to make our lives miserable. But yeah, yeah. It, he could totally come back, and we could look at this and be like, remember that time we fired Bill Belichick and before yeah. we got another great quarterback and started a new dynasty? Remember that? Yeah. Fun times. All right, man. Always fun talking. I could literally talk to you all day. I love you. Um, I'm going to call you about a trade. We we haven't made a dynasty trade in a while. I'm going to call you. (laughs) All right. Later, Later. Hey, thanks so much for kicking in with your main man, Michael Smith. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, but also subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Rate it. Review it. Tell your friends about it. Oh, and be sure to follow me on social media.